old days, when we needed a copy of something on our page, we used to drive down town and buy a first act. But fortunately, it's a little easier now. There are almost a dozen ways to duplicate your text frames, graphic frames, and other page items in InDesign. Here are just a few. The first way is to select an object that you want to duplicate, and then hold down the Option key on the Mac or Alt on Windows, and simply drag it. Dragging with the Option key or the Alt key on Windows always duplicates the object. Simple, just like Illustrator. I'm going to delete this frame over here, just so I have a little bit of room to work with down here. Now I'll show you another way to duplicate something. I'll select this object, and I'm going to go to Edit, Duplicate. You could use this keyboard shortcut, but I never remember what all of those things do. So I'm just going to choose Duplicate, and we'll see a duplicate appear down here. Why did it show up down here? Because InDesign always remembers the offsets from the last time it duplicated something. So because I copied this so far down here, it copied this so far down here as well with Duplicate. I'll delete that with the Delete key and show you another way to duplicate. Edit, Step, and Repeat. Command Option U or Control U on Windows. Repeat the page to get more than one copy of something. For example, let's say I want three more copies of this text frame down here. I could say I want them about eight pikas down. The vertical offset will be eight pikas down, so each one will be eight pikas down from the next. How many do I want? I said three, right? Now the preview checkbox is turned on, so as soon as I click in any of these other fields or hit tab, I can actually see a preview of it. That looks pretty good. I'll click OK, and now I can move on. Let's say I want this same text frame on the next page in exactly the same position. I could choose Edit, Copy, and then go to the next page with Shift Page Down, and now Paste. But if I simply choose Paste, it always ends up in the middle of the page. That's not what I want. So I'll hit Delete, and instead I'll choose Edit, Paste in Place. Now it ends up in exactly the same place as it was on the first page. Now for the last method of duplicating, I'm going to zoom in down here and select this funny shape. I'll choose the Direct Select tool by double clicking on it. Then I go up to the X or Y field of the control panel and I'll change its value. Perhaps I'll set this to uh, 9 picas. But before I hit enter, I'm going to hold down the Option key or the Alt on Windows. Remember what I said about the Option or Alt key? It duplicates objects. So while that's still flashing up there, I hold down Option or Alt on Windows and then hit Enter. And you'll see that I've made a duplicate of it. It literally moved over a duplicate of that object. This trick of using Option or Alt when you press Enter in the control panel works with any of the transformations that we're talking about in this chapter. For example, you can duplicate while changing the scaling, the rotating, the skewing, any of those things. The Option key or Alt on Windows will tell InDesign to duplicate while you're doing those things. Why are there so many ways of doing the same thing? Well, they don't do it just so you can impress your friends. They do it because the more ways you know how to do something, the more likely you are to use the most efficient technique in any given situation, especially when you're under deadline. Let's look at how you can rotate any object on your page in InDesign. I want to rotate this text frame, so I select it with the selection tool, and I'll go up to the rotate area of the control panel. I can choose a preset rotation out of this pop-up menu, or simply select the rotation angle in here and type in anything I want. Let's say 20 degrees. Now how did it know to rotate around the upper left corner of this object? It did that because of this reference point proxy way over here on the left side of the control panel, completely set to the upper left corner. If I wanted to rotate on the center point, I click on the center point. Now, when I change my rotation, you'll see it change. Let's say it to uh, minus 30 degrees. Did you see how that rotated around the center point? Let's look at other ways to rotate objects. I'll select this text frame down here, and I'll click on the Rotate 90 Degrees Clockwise button. They actually put buttons in here to rotate 90 degrees at a time. I don't really know why, but they did. So I can rotate clockwise or counterclockwise 90 degrees at a time. All right, time for option number three. Let's select this frame and try and rotate that. I'll use the Rotate tool. Right here in the tool panel, select the Rotate tool and simply click and drag. Now the Rotate tool also uses the proxy point in the control panel to rotate around. Currently it's set to the center. I can change the control point up here in the control panel and drag again and you see now it's rotating around this point. 
Alternately, if I know exactly where I want to rotate around, perhaps right at the end of the teapot spout, I simply click on it with the rotate tool, and now that sets the point right there. So if I click and drag anywhere, you'll see that it rotates around that point. The last rotation tool I'm going to show you is the free transform tool, which is right down here in the tool panel, or you can just hit the E key to get that. I like the free transform tool because it lets me grab anywhere outside of the object. Just click anywhere outside the object and start dragging and it'll rotate. In this case, it always rotates around the center point of the object. So now that we know how to rotate objects, the obvious question is how to scale them larger or smaller. That's what we're going to cover in the next movie. And the golden law of page layout. Nothing is ever the size you need it to be on your page. Fortunately, there are a number of ways to scale your graphics, text, and other page items. I'm going to scale this text frame up here, so I'll select it, and I choose the scaling tool. This is one way that you can scale. Now, one of the things you need to pay attention to is where is it going to scale from. By default, it's going to scale in the upper left corner of this frame here, because that's where the crosshairs are. It's in the upper left-hand corner because that's what's set up in the control panel. This is the reference point marker here. So it's in the upper left corner here. If I click on the center point, the crosshairs move to the center point. If I click in the lower left corner, the crosshairs move down here. If I want to scale from a, any arbitrary point, I can use the scale tool and just simply click. I'll click in the upper right corner of that L. I'll scale from that point there. Now, I'm simply going to click and drag. Because I just clicked and dragged, it scaled disproportionately. That doesn't look very good, so let me undo that with a Command Z or Control Z on Windows. Instead of clicking and dragging, I'm going to hold down the Shift key and then click and drag. There we go, that's better. Now, with the Shift key held down, it scales proportionally. The height and width stay proportional. Now, you may have noticed that I could actually see it scaling at that point. Sometimes, if you simply click and drag, you'll see just the blue outline scale. Right? Just like that. Other times, if you click and drag, you'll actually see it scale. What's the difference? The difference is having a little pause before you start dragging. If you click and hold and then drag, you'll actually see it scale. Same thing works with rotation and moving and all kinds of stuff. It's a nice little trick. Just wanted to throw that out at you. Let's look at another way to scale this. I'm going to use the uh, select tool to drag a corner or a side handle. If I click and drag a side handle, it resizes that frame, right? That's not what I want. I want to actually scale it. So let me undo that. And instead, I'm going to hold down the command key or control key on Windows. Command drag will actually scale the frame with the selection tool. And that's pretty cool, except again, here we go, it's, it's disproportional. So I'll undo that. Remember what we held down last time? The shift key. Shift means height width proportional. So I'm going to do command shift or on Windows control shift and I'll scale it with the selection tool. To be honest, that's typically how I scale stuff if I want to work interactively just by eye. I don't usually use the scaling tool. It's up to you. I usually just use the select tool. Command shift or control shift drag to scale it into position. Now here's a third way that you might want to scale. The control panel. The control panel also lets you scale using these scaling values here. Now notice this little button. That button is the height width proportion link button. When it's unlinked like it is right now, I can scale this proportionally. But if I click on it, now it's linked. So if I scale one, it's going to scale the other way as well. Let's do it on one of these images. Why not? I'm going to scale this image up. Let's say I'll scale it up to 125%. And you can see that it scaled up on the page and it scaled from the upper right corner. Why did it do it from the upper right corner? Because the reference point in the control panel was set to the upper right corner. If I change this to the lower left corner and scale it up again, do it to 125% again, now you could see it scaled from the lower left corner. That remained stationary and the rest of it scaled. Now you'll notice when I scale this image that the scaling values reset to 100%. What's that about? I mean, this image is definitely not 100% of what it used to be, right? So how do I tell what the percentage of the image is? Well, for that, I need to use the Direct Select tool. So I'll hit A to select the Direct Select tool, and then click on the image, and now we can see, ah, there we go. Uh, it's about 24%, 24.5% of the original size. So the original size must have been much larger, and then it got scaled down, and then I scaled it up again. But whatever the case, the current size is about 25% of the original size. 
However, if I go back to the selection tool, I'll just hit V and then click on that frame, we can see that this is still set to 100%. And I'll talk about that 100% setting in just a little bit because there's a preference that lets you control whether that gets reset to 100% or not. Another way to scale is with the free transform tool. I love the free transform tool. You can select it here in the tool panel or just hit E. I'll just hit E and that selects it in the tool panel as well. And now you can scale or rotate or move all at the same time. The free transform tool is very versatile. If you click and drag inside, it moves. If you click and drag outside, it rotates. If you click and drag one of the handles, it scales. So there's scaling disproportionately. Let me undo that. And instead, I'll hold down the shift key. Remember, the shift means proportional. Shift, drag, and that scales it proportionally. Very, very handy. What if I want to scale an image inside of a frame? Again, our friend, the direct select tool. Let me grab this frame here. Oh, it looks like somebody's already rotated that inside this frame. Now I want to scale it. I could use any of those options. I could use the control panel values to scale. Let's set this to uh, maybe 25%. That made it much bigger. I can use the, the drag feature simply by dragging one of these corner handles and I'll hold in the shift key so it stays proportional. That'll scale it. I don't have to use the command drag or control drag on Windows because I'm scaling an image inside of a frame. That command key modifier or the control on Windows means scale the frame and the content. In this case, I'm just scaling the content. So I just have to shift drag to scale uh, with the selection tool or you could use a scale tool, whatever feature you want to scale the image inside the frame will work just fine. Now let me go back and talk about this problem with the 100%. It's not really a problem, some people like it going back to 100%. Uh, on the other hand, some people like it to always reflect the real scaling of that object itself. For example, if I take this text frame and I scale it up really large, I just did the command shift drag or the control shift drag on Windows, some people like having it go back to 100%. So if I select the text in here, you can see that the text scaled up and it's 28 points, right? Now other people like to have the actual percentage show up in the scaling. And if you're that kind of person, there's a preference for you. Under the InDesign menu on the Macintosh or under the Edit menu on Windows, you can go to General Preferences. And the General Preference has an option here. This is new in CS3. When scaling, do you want to apply to content or adjust scaling percentage? And I'm going to show you what happens if we change this to adjust scaling percentage. I'll click OK. And then I'll scale this way down. OK? And we'll see that the control panel now shows me that this frame is 25% of what it used to be. It didn't reset to 100%, it's 25%. And if I double click on here to switch to the type tool and select some of that text, you'll see something interesting. You'll see that the original type size before I scaled it was 28 points, but the current type is 71. The value inside the parentheses is the visual size of it, 7.1%. Now, if you don't like that scaling, I just went back to the selection tool. If you don't like that scaling, you can always go back to 100%. And now it's back to where it was. Let me undo that. If you do like that scaling and you want to keep it that way, consider going to the control panel flyout menu and choosing redefine scaling as 100%. Now that will force it back to 100%. And if I select some of that text, I'll zoom in here so we can see it's little tiny text. You can see that the type size value now sets to the real size, the actual visual size, which is 7.1 points. Of course, remember, while you can scale your text and vector art all you want, scaling bitmap images does have an effect on their quality. If you scale a Photoshop image like this one over here up, its resolution will go down. Scale it down and the resolution goes up. It's just something to keep in mind when scaling objects on your page. Objects on your page.